Hey guys, welcome back to your favorite podcast, Full Coverage, with me, Amy Way. And Laura Lee. And Laura Lee with the Marvel thing. Honey, you got the fool <laughs> up in here. <laughs> and of course, it's like been like two weeks since we've been here, so it's like, what is up? I'm What's going fantasy. on? What's happening? Oh, What's we just the traveled. vibe? We just traveled. We just got back on Sunday. I got back Sunday afternoon. I mm-hmm. left um, Manny and Gabriel in she Montana. I pit. left a little early. My pit of the week. <laughs> that, that should be your pit. That should be your pit. <laughs> That shit, I was leaving your guys. Listen, I had to get back. I had shit to do. So I booked like the earliest flight out of Montana and just went back myself because I was like, I want to spend Sunday night working because I'm a sociopath. Uh-huh. And then you guys flew back a little later that afternoon and our after was me. Delayed. Oh, yes. And I didn't literally That's get home That's your freaking midnight. pit, honey. Mm-hmm. Oh, was that what time you arrived? Yes. Like I didn't get back Manny. home until literally like 1230 maybe. I, and um, I left at six. I got home at like 435. My mouth's but spreading. I also, I know, we just downed <laughs> some hot Cheeto puff things. Popcorn, what is it? Puffcorns. Puffcorns. The hot Cheeto puffcorns are addicting. So Manny keeps telling me I need to try them. He keeps I have on been. saying I've told that. I've this a gazillion times, And he way. walks in this podcast room today and he goes, I brought snacks. And he just, he has them. And me and Tyler haven't been able to get our hand out of the bag. <laughs> and they are addicted them. just like I am. I literally love anything hot with the hot Cheeto powder on it. But it's they're but so it's light the and texture. airy. It's the texture. You could take down like 20 of those in a second. And feel nothing. And feel nothing. And literally, it's like if you're eating packing peanuts, like that yes. soft styrofoamy texture. Yes. There's something about it that I want to... They're so good and They're snacky. So good. Okay, so wait, so your peak oh, yes. is Montana. So Montana, Windy. honey, I went to Montana. Manny, you can join me some on this one because I, mean, I we guess did you together. were there. We were, perhaps. And I got to um, sign something off my bucket list. And mm. I've always wanted to ride a horse. Uh, and But I've always passed on the opportunity because as we've spoken about this before on the podcast, I just don't believe in riding animals mm-hmm. if they aren't taken care of very well yes. or they're abused depleted and whatever that may it, be like you can see it in the if animal. the vibe isn't right i would not i'll put my foot down i would not ride an animal but i got to ride a clydesdale they have like a total of thing eight they don't have that many horses no 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 i no. think it was like eight or less it could have been less i think it was even less like i only seriously only saw like five so yeah six. it was a it was a huge ranch but mm-hmm. they have like five or six horses clydesdales and they treat them like their children <laughs> no literally and like the thing is too like the route is so minimal like yeah. it's like literally a little walk around it's like a 30 like, minute walk literally that they do Not four times a day mm-hmm. and then they play in their pasture and sleep and eat all day that's that's their routine like it's not bad at all yeah it's really cool and like it's so funny because my horse was like staying on the guy's ass the whole time and I was like does he want a treat from you and he was like I, we don't give them treats because it teaches them to bite and nibble you uh, so he told me he said and they graze all day long they don't need treats but mm-hmm. he's like you shouldn't because they'll nip at you and he was like he, he just knows I'm um she knows that I'm her dad mm-hmm. and she loves me and that's why she's following me around like this like a puppy dog and i was like oh they're like my big puppy God. dogs yes he said if he goes out in the pasture during the day while they're playing he said all the horses will be on his ass like they're very it's social so animals yeah, they yeah. love people they, they're, they're in herds i mean that's like they what are they, do. they are they're social so it was like one of the best experiences i've ever had we got manny back on a horse after his mexico trauma and he did tell the horse guy he was like Um, I had a trauma, you know, the horse kind of ran off and went crazy with me. And the guy goes, oh, where'd you ride? And he goes, Mexico. And the guy looks at Manny like, boy. That makes sense. That's why that happened to you. "Ah." Ah. And I was like, well, the thing is, like, I knew immediately the second I got there that the vibe vibe was was different. Yeah. Well, the vibe was different here. It was not off. It was like opposite. It was like good. Whereas the other one, I didn't know anything about it because I don't like ride horses so I don't know what a good vibe even is but when I got to this one there's only like five six horses max Mm -hmm. and the other one has like 50 yeah no that are all free roaming which I did like but like it's too like aggressive like too intense yeah whereas this one I was like listen like I need like the most calmest horse you have the horse that like is gonna be the most like chill as fuck I'm not the most like I'm a little tense doing this. You know what I was funny do it. too? I was like, Laura, I don't think I'm going to do it. The guy pulled up this horse and he goes, Manny was like starting to walk away like he wasn't going to do it. And then he pulls up this horse and he was like, who's like the most scared, like most hasn't ridden, like not into this. And I was like, this one. And I was like, Manny, this is your horse. Go get on it. Like I was like, I don't care what your and answer they, is. This is your horse. Go me. get on the horse. <laughs> And did you have the best time ever? I did, and it really was beautiful. And the horse was so. The thing is, too, what I felt good about it is that it's a Clydesdale. Like it's so fucking huge. There's, Biggest horse I've ever seen in my whole life. They're wait. They even said they don't really buck that like or kick really Clydesdale. So right. like calm animals. They, 
like the energy from the like we're so much just calmer than the other ones I've been around. Well, so they're I was probably like, you know happier I'm, horses too. Yeah. Hundred percent. So it was. It was good. By the way, we went to Montana to visit Daniel. We did, way. and it was so, Gabriel Zamora, yeah. Daniel Prada, Manny M U A, <laughs> and Laura Lee, and Laura Lee. And so we just did like a little friends trip, a little getaway. My vlog's up was, now. If you guys want oh to see my more, God, yes. you're gonna love the vlog. It's so funny. Oh, I can't wait to. It's watch very funny. It. Like I'm all of our ruckus it. and chaos is in it. We're crazy because we're literally nuts. Nuts, it I tell was, you. It was truly so much fun. We just wanted to do like a little friend getaway. And mm -hmm. Daniel lives a lot of the time, a lot of his time out there. And so we wanted to see like what he gets to experience and, you know, his vibe. And he, I, we knew he would plan it so beautifully. And Daniel's it the beautiful. ultimate host. He lives his life planner. to, Kate, I don't know. He likes to take care of people. He yes. loves to host. He loves to take people on adventures. I would mm -hmm, say that's probably mm -hmm. one of his favorite activities with, with his joys what, with his joys because Daniel yeah. finds joy in a lot of different things yeah. especially outdoorsy things and he loves nothing more when he gets to have someone that he loves experience that so like 100%. us three coming to visit him I know us he city girls us city coming girls into coming the, to Montana into the, like, uh, into the wilderness we're like <laughs> I never ridden a horse. Someone said um, they're surprised I haven't because I'm from Alabama, and I mm. agree with that statement actually. But again, I where I'm from is a I, I don't want to call it a city, but there just isn't really it's not a tourist area, so there's no opportunity to just go ride a horse there. Got it. If I would have grown up where my rest of my family's from, they live in the country, country like way down south in Alabama. There was ample opportunity to ride got someone's it. horse, but. I just never really got the opportunity, I suppose. Save a horse. Ride a I've been riding cowboys instead, honey. <laughs> just kidding. Tyler's the cowboy. <laughs> I've also been saving many horses. Yes, you and have. riding many means. You sure have. <laughs> you sure have. And that's why I'm a slut. But anyway. It was a beautiful trip. It was stunning. It was beautiful. Like, I did like a little, like, a TikTok of like kind of showing the scenery and stuff like that. Oh, it was so cute. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And like, it was so nice to be able, like, I don't really ever like make stuff like that, but it was like the place you're in, you're like, dude, you have to like appreciate the beauty of like the world. Oh, and gosh, it makes me yeah. feel that there, you know, like I felt it. <laughs> I've traveled to like, I I'm going to see every state in America, mm -hmm. God willing. Um, But as my, I've traveled a lot of America Absolutely. and a lot by car, not just by plane. So I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of America and I got to say, this is a really fucking pretty country. You've seen some shit. I've seen some shit and it's shocking how much I've seen in this country. Mm -hmm. And it's just shocking that it's all in one country. Like, right. and so vastly different. Like yeah. I've spent a lot of time by the ocean, by in the desert, yeah. up in the mountains, they have like every kind of middle America, Florida, New York. Travel. Like I've been everywhere. Like all the spaces. I haven't been mm. all the states. Right. And but you've seen every season. I've seen every season. You know what's funny though? Like when you think about it, California has like all four seasons. It you does. Can, you can see and do everything in just like California. And you know, me and Ty travel up north California multiple mm -hmm. times a year mm -hmm. and do adventures. Because there's so much in this state alone. Mm -hmm. um, it's This is definitely the coolest state in the United States. I mean, you guys can argue with me on that. That's you, fine. You, yeah, you totally. It can be a but different But California opinion, but... definitely, in my opinion, is by far the coolest state in the United States because it offers so much. Right. And it's very diverse. It's a, it's so diverse. Pot. Like the people along make LA is it. a big mixing pot of people. I feel like if you go through California, sure, it's not quite as diverse, but it's still, it's a mixing pot. It's like mixing you pot. get a little bit of everything here and it makes the city so special, you know? 100%. I agree. It's like what's so special about LA mm -hmm. specifically, but. California is definitely the best day, but Montana was a dream. And by the way, if you guys watch Yellowstone, the show, I know I watched it. Yeah, me too. Is it not identical? It's literally just like that. It's and literally just there was like moments that. we went into the bar and we're like, this is like Yellowstone. Even the music they played. Yes. Just like whenever, what's her name? Beth? Yes. Goes into the bars and drinks her whiskey. It's identical I'm like, That's to what that. It is. Those small, tiny bars with cowboys like lined up on the bar yes. drinking. It's just like that. And they're that. dressed the same. Just I mean, like that. I mean, obviously it's like, Inspired by something. It has to be inspired by something. They so. definitely made it identical to Montana. By the way, we were in yes. Whitefish, Montana, up north, close to Canada. Yeah. Literally like five miles away, uh -huh. like six miles away. Close to Canada. Gorge. It was gorgeous. It was absolutely fabulous. And I was so excited. I went to Wyoming last year and this year in Montana. I gotta hit Idaho Ooh. and the Dakotas and some other places. I got a yeah. lot of, I got a lot on there's my a, list. I was gonna say, there's actually a lot on the list to see. Mm -hmm. But it'll be really fun. I'm excited for you. What's your peak? My peak is that I have a launch happening today. Ah, Lunar Beauty. Mm, mm, Lunar mm, Beauty. Mm. I have a little launch today. It is my. Today. Um, today. That's a Friday. 
Laura does this to me every fucking time. I do. I, you shocked me. Every, I was like, oh my, I was like, I didn't. Today. That's literally <laughs> what I said. I was like, I didn't see Today. it. Oh. That literally, so it's technically launching on Friday. We're, we're right now it's a Tuesday, technically, but I'm trying to be inception-y. <laughs> and I'm totally like, blowing that blowing experience. Blowing the cover, totally blew the cover. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Um, but anyway, it's now live is what I meant to say, is that it's my advent calendar palette, oh. which I've never seen done before, which I'm so excited. I have two new lip oils that are launching with it. And it's basically it's an advent calendar where every day is a new eyeshadow. <sighs> and it's like the 12 days of Christmas, but it's the 12 days of lunar. And every day is a new eyeshadow and you get to magnetize and put them wherever you want in the palette itself. That is literally the coolest idea ever. Thank you. I it was is. like, honestly, so excited when I finally came up with the idea. I was like, dude, this is like crazy. I've never seen it done before. And part of me kind of worries. I'm like, is, are other people gonna start doing it to other brands? Gonna start I'm doing sure it? they will. But it's my idea. It's the world of makeup, baby. You either <laughs> pat it like? or you let it fly. Or let it be. No, totally. Um, but I really am excited to kind of see what people think of it because I'm. It's my brand that does it. I would never it's do a that. Minimum advent. But I just had to throw that in there because it would be so funny. I was like, I have to say it. No, because you know, I'd be like, Lord, do it. Do no, it. you'd be like, you fucking kind. I'm gonna kill no. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, I'm really, really, I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be. Really fun. It's very limited edition, so it's like something where it's like, what it's gone, it's gone. But get it. If you I get love it. like I always I loved how the admin calendars growing up. Like I always I like, love okay them. them. I love watching people opening them I on do. TikTok and stuff. There's something fun about it. Like, there's just like this like weird like I get pulled in like watching people unbox admin calendars. Me too. So I was like, wait, Me I kind of want to do that for myself, but in a different way. And that's sick. So that's so cool. I love this idea. I think it's so original. Thank you. And guys, if you want to check it out in Lunar our description box, .com. lunarbeauty.com, mm -hmm. and then the link will link it directly in our description box. So be sure and click. I can't wait to play with mine. I'm going to film me putting mine together and Aww. show my little lip. Yeah, I love you. You're the best. But it's going to be, <laughs> it's really cute. My vibe, like I'm, for me, like Christmas time, I'm not really into like the traditional colors mm -hmm. of like, the gold and the red and like green, like that kind of thing. I like the colors of them, but I'm not necessarily into like that color Having story that in a for palette. Christmas stuff. Yeah. So for me, I'm all about like more like snow and like Aurora Borealis. Like that's like my, like blues and purples and vibes. Whatever so you interpret it as. Yeah, I that's think my interpretation. That's, that's really cool. And that's part of like the Christmas And that's spirit. why people love Lunar Beauty because it's like your interpretation of your themes of the palettes. That's yeah. what makes it so special. Like how I want to make it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think they're really going to love this. This is going to goop and gag it's the gonna girlies. It's going to goop the girls. It's going to goop the girls. They're Absolutely. going to be excited. And then you said there's two new lip oils. Two new lip oils. Because like the, the feedback I got last time when I first had launched lip oils was like, hey, we like, love the lip oils, love the product. Wanted some color to them. Like mm. wanted more actual color. So I have tease me and love me shade the two shades are one's kind of like more of a berry tone where it kind of gives you like a little bit of a berry kiss pretty look and the other one gives you a pinky one so it's like Aww. strawberry color like with the strawberry scent and a berry color with like a berry scent delicious so the, and they actually have like a good amount of pigment to them not a lot like anything crazy but actually pigment in comparison to last one they're like clear. a pretty like like haze over your yes lip. yeah it's an actual like color that's really nice so i I'm can't excited. wait to try this I like them. oh i know i'm I gonna love like them, them. Like i love the lip bowls i i keep one in my bag here all the time and use oh, it my yeah they're so nice Thank guys you. they're probably i actually have your nude palette on my eyes today i sure do and you guys can you. use code laura <laughs> lee that <laughs> reminds me that i just <laughs> i just reminded you myself know what? You can wait use a damn minute scratch everything i said just use my code <laughs> I just remember I had I'm that. I'm fucking crying. Use code don't Laura Lee. Get that in there. Yeah, they, don't forget that part too. Get that in there. Oh my God, that's so funny. Yep. But yeah, no, I'm really excited and I'm hoping that the launch is going well as it's this is going up. Right now. <laughs> yeah, it's up going right now, right now as we speak. Check it out. It's sickening, honestly. Okay, guys. So my pit for this week is I've been working on... Okay, this project with Minimum, and mm -hmm. it's not clothing, because I want to expand my boutique, my clothing boutique. Yes. I want to expand it, Minimum.co. And yeah. I've run into a wall here. I <laughs> bad news, so is my pit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm working on a big project, and this project has cost me more of an investment than any project I've ever done in the history of me. You're lying. I've never paid ever? this ever. I've never put down this Even much money of my own money. LLA. And not in Los Angeles. This project's bigger than Laura Lee Los Angeles. I've never put more of my own money in a project than this project I'm doing with Minimum. And this is, you're, you ready to scream? 
I didn't know that. So Laura. I have it almost. Oh yeah, and I know and the. I obviously know the product. He is. does, I just didn't but know he know like it was going to be wise. this crazy. Yeah. It, it's a really crazy product. Um, it's not a really crazy product. I'm sorry. Project. project. It's, a cra- it's a big project, it's a project yeah. and I'm putting my hopes and dreams and all my money into it. So. God willing, it goes over well. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it will, but I'm giving. I'm taking the risk because I'm putting everything I have into it. So I feel like that's what but you do the best you can. Absolutely. And then, you know, hopefully that pays off. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so I designed the packaging for this project and my designers who helped me design, I use a company, um, graphic design company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They came back and were like, that's design's not going to work. You know that, right? And I was like, like, why? "Why? What do you mean?" And they're like, "Well, over time, like it's not going to look good because of X, Y, and Z. I can't say too much, or I'll give it right, away." Right. And they're like, "You need to pull the whole PO, the project off the line, pause everything, and redo your packaging. Let us redo your packaging completely." Because get I more was rubbed off, getting them like to do. I was getting them to do the labeling and like design on the packaging, but I had already picked the actual packaging and they disagreed strongly. And I do, I paid these people a lot of fucking money. So I listened to them and it was, it cost us tens of thousands of dollars to pull the project. So we ended up, after I put in all my money, I ended up giving around 15,000 more dollars of money I'm going to lose just for pulling for the, the project for the pausing of the project and redoing and redoing the packaging. Um, so now I'm even out way more money, but I believe in this project a lot mm. and I want to do everything I can to make it perfect. And yeah. I'm going to listen to the company and I'm really, really, really happy with the new design I showed you. Oh, so fucking obsessed. It's so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And so I'm happy we ended up pulling it. I'm bummed, you know, that it had to go this way. But anyways, it got, because of this, it can't launch this year. It was my holiday launch with Minimum and now that's completely out of whack and mm. I don't have even a timeline. It will launch in 2023. Yeah. But, now a ton of my money is tied up in it and it's not going to launch for a long time because of the packaging. So I'm like, Fuck. cool. All right. Well, maybe like, I don't even know. I don't honestly. know. I'm like, I don't honestly, know. it's so, because like you also don't want to really launch things in the beginning, beginning you of the don't. year. You're you don't. You like, don't, oh, especially do for that. how big this is for me and yes. like how much I put into it. The thing is, I've got to launch it at an ideal time, which would have been holiday. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, it will go in production soon because we've gotten the packaging straight out. So the thing is, I'm stuck because I can't hold it till next holiday. That's not, not. I'm not doing that. No, there's no way. So I might just hold it till spring next year. Yeah, a minimum launch. But that kind of sucks because it wasn't as planned. But you know what? As a business owner, it's really important that you don't fall too in love with all your little plans and ideas Mm -hmm. and schemes because this is how it kind of always goes. It always goes like this. So you have to be able to be flexible and you have to be able to roll with the punches. And that's what I'm doing. Do you know what's fucking crazy? Literally... I'm, you know, I'm gonna make this my pit, my pit. Get in I'm there. It in my Get pit. in there. I'm changing my pit up what it was, and now it's this. So, my advent calendar. Mm-hmm. You know how I, like I finished it, I created it, everything is done, I sent over. Like how the advent calendar works, it's like it's like a box, and there's cutouts in the box. You put the thing, and then you put the film over it for the the preparations, like the whole thing. It's like a sit- you can't like open one and put it back. It's like once the thing's done. Oh, it's I see. Done. I see what you're you know saying. What I'm saying like once like the preparation once is you done, peel it, baby. It's you can't pilt, repeal. You can't honey. reseal it. It's done. So one of the colors Mm-mm. in the product they had sent over as like my final production, like send me the whole palette was done. They're in production. They're like, okay, we finished. Here's the thing. One of them was wrong. <gasps> no. Laura, I'm not kidding you. Like I about had a melt down the, the shimmer green shade. That's like one of the like prettiest in the palette. Cause it makes it, you know, very holiday. They had sent it to me and it was too soft. Oh. It was pressed too soft. It was almost like it too. It could break. It's, yeah, it can break. And it's just like, it's just too Almost like emollient. creamy, too emollient. So I was like, no, like this doesn't like, that's not what I approved. Like still pretty shade, but not what I approved. So I'm like, I need you guys to remake every single one of these shades. Send me it individually so I can put it in with the palette. <gasps> so now that's like my plan. It's like every time someone buys a fucking palette, you're getting an extra little shadow I'm glad on the you're side. saying this. Yeah, so no, totally, says, totally. So tell the podcast what they're going to get now. So, now you're, so if you're going to get the admin calendar, you get the extra little uh, shadow shade number nine specifically and shade number nine. number nine um you're getting it on the side too because it needs to be replaced like the, sh- the shade number nine in the thing is like you can totally use it still that's fine it's just not what i approved so i'm not gonna be 
putting my name on something, be like, oh my god, yeah, absolutely. I was like, no, you need to fix the. So fuck if you up. guys get an extra shadow, now you know. That's and that's why. So like, you're gonna be taking that number nine and using it into the palette, putting it in. Or you could trade out. You know, yeah, what, totally, whatever. whatever you, want. you got you options you want to now. Do with it. Mandy's giving is, you options. Yeah, I'm giving you options, but the thing is, like, at the end of the day, like, you need to. I, I would like you to use that one. If you don't want to, that's fine too. But it's just like crazy how we had to do all that, get it air shipped over. <sighs> Already is like hell on earth. I'm like, it's so wild. Like as a brand, like how Laura was saying, how you have these things that happen. Like the fact that they, I had approved everything. They start running the real production. They send me the production sample. Like, okay, we're already in production. Here's one of them to see everything's good. And I'm like, it's not good. It's not good. It's not done. It's not. Like one of the shades isn't approved. Wow. Like, what do you fucking mean? Like, why is this not checked with quality control in this aspect? Like, you know, and that Dang. and something, something with that. And so I was like, no, you guys need to fix this. Like, I'm not gonna, that's like how I am though with my brand, just like how you are too. Like you wait for things to be as great as you can get, get it to be before launching something like yeah. you want to be perfect just like I did too yeah so that's like my pit that I, we had to do that like yeah just in general I'm that's, like, that's such spending a bomb so like Bummer. just more money on it all that kind of stuff and admin calendars are already very expensive to make which I had no fucking idea well now you do now I do <laughs> and now I do okay, I have one more baby baby peak and my <laughs> We're like Cute. our 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 brains, the brains are, are lighting activating. up. They're activating. They're activating. As They're lighting the up, dude. Going, yes, I'm like Laura. Like, yeah, oh, oh, oh. fuck this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what's no, literally happening. That's so all the time. much has also happened in the past week. Our heads no, are gonna that's, explode. That's probably why, because it's literally my chickens. collab with Chic Glam came oh, out. My <laughs> the way we have seven peaks and seven bits. <laughs> My 17th peak What a blessed life, though. What no, a good honestly, fucking totally, life totally. I have. We have just, um, we have a lot of pits, too, though. It's okay, nice. what's cool is, like, I've been working. Oh, we have to tell your video, too, we're going to do. Oh, my Ooh, God, yes. I yeah. forgot. You're so right. I'm so excited for that. Okay, so, guys, I collab with She Glam, and I got, they globally collabed. I believe it was five of five. us, mm -hmm. and I'm the U.S. influencer so that got to make. Cool. I was like, bitch, that's so cool. That's so fucking sick. So, into that, um, they collab with, like, five influencers influencers globally to create their own cream blush and cream highlighter. And she Lam knows that their cream blush is my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Like I use it 24 yes. seven on TikTok and in my videos. Yep. And they knew that. So whenever they were doing this collaboration, they reached out to me to be their U S influencer. I love it. Like Bitch, their ambassador, was, influencer, yes, creator, yes. everything. And I got to create my own highlighter and liquid blush with them. And I believe my discount code is Laura six, but if you guys mm -hmm. go to the she glam website and, or you can even type in Google, she glam X Laura Lee and it pops up but it's 9.99 for both that's insane you get both you get the the cream highlighter the box all the stuff plus um more money off if you use code laura six so thank you she glam for the so opportunity cool. you I guys check glam. it out i love them i love it and they Tell literally like are working with me to even promote laura stuff too yes. i'm like what like i was gonna do that regardless like but the fact that they like know that i love them too and they're like no we want to like work with you both and so mm -hmm. we're gonna do a video together too on my channel just like I don't know what we're going to do exactly, actually. We're coming up with ready. some ideas. Well, we want to do like, we want to ask it's, each other some juicy questions or something. Yeah. We're trying to come up with a good video thing, but we're going to use my collab in it. Mm -hmm. And She Glam sponsoring the video. That's so, so cool. They're like, so cool. Me? Like, that's so sweet of them to do that because I was going to do it already. So well, the girl like, from no, we She Glam, we went to the She Glam event and mm -hmm. the girl, I love her from She Glam. She's amazing. I won't mm -hmm. say her name for her sake. No, she's but the sweetest. She's the sweetest. And she was like, I'm trying to figure out, um, a way of working with you both. Would you guys do a collab video? I was like, bitch. Of course we will. Of course. Look at me. Course. Like I think that she glam to me is like, like they are like that girl. They are. Their quality they are is really good. Because the quality is so good, and the uh, price point isn't high. Yes. So it's high, high quality, but a low price. And I also point. like the products they've been coming out with lately. Dude, like they're good the corp, stuff. The Corpse Bride collection. I thought oh, was so, so cute. fucking cute. So I was like. Cute. Huge fans Wait, of that. Wait, what? It looked um, amazing. So yeah, they really, they really got to go it on. But thank you, She Glam, for the opportunity. For me, thank you for, for sponsoring well. my bestie. <laughs> and so cool. um, yeah, we're super excited. Mm -hmm. But we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. You guys, HelloFresh, if you do not know what that is, how could you not? It is 
farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You guys, you can skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make your cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. You know what? If you guys want to save some money, HelloFresh mm -hmm. is a good way to do it. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than grocery shopping too. So not only is it going to be super convenient because everything, instructions, and ingredients are going to be right in your fridge, but you're actually going to be saving money with HelloFresh. The cool thing too is the fact that HelloFresh actually offers vegan meals now, which I think Ooh. is really, really cool. Vegan menu, vegan recipes. And I think that's just like a big thing for a lot of people who, you know, who are vegan and who want to have options for things and be able to make things themselves. I think that's a really, really cool thing just in general to have. I personally love HelloFresh. I've used it before. I'm not a huge cook. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they make it so easy to like kind of yeah. follow an instruction. I remember when I got it and I was like, wait, what do I do? And the <laughs> instructions are so easy to follow along that I was like actually having a good time with it, which I didn't think I would have. And I feel like it got me to try different meals that I've never yes. cooked before because they give you, you know, different stuff mm -hmm. all the time. But we Absolutely. do have a little something, something for you guys. If you go to HelloFresh.com slash full 65 and use code full 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That is awesome, guys. That's HelloFresh.com slash full 65 use code full 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. It's America's number one meal kit. Thank you to Case Five for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. You guys, if you guys don't know what Case Defy is or you don't know about Case Defy, let me put you on. They are a tech accessory brand and they make phone cases, mm. Apple Watch bands, AirPod cases, and so much more. They even have these cute phone charms now available and I'm so excited to use them. And they make a variety of phone cases. I love it because they actually have so much customizable things too. They do. Which I feel like makes it really, really cool. And like the fact that like I, so for me, like I tend to draw my phone a lot. I'm always having my phone oh my with gosh. me all Same. the time. So for me, I'm like, I need these kind of cases where they're going to actually protect from like hella feet up. It's not going to break. It's not going to shatter. They have like this gorgeous shock proof mm -hmm. resistant plastic. That's absolutely incredible. And I feel like they're just a great, great company. And I'm like, if you haven't heard of Caseify, you're living under a rock. Literally, they're so good. They're so good. They're very popular. Yeah, they have these impact cases that have like military grade protection for your phone. But also what's cool about those is that they're really sleek. So mm -hmm. they're not going to be bulky and be annoying to carry around. They're really sleek and sharp looking. And pretty. Yeah, I they're so pretty. I love all the different designs. But we got a little discount for you guys here. Yes, we do. You guys can go to caseify.com and use code 15FOOL to get 15% off your order. Dang, that's a good deal. Absolutely the best. And we're back to dump, jump, to dump to into- To dump, jump. We're going to dump into this <laughs> rapid fire. We're going to shit ourselves. <laughs> Honestly, we could. We yeah. just ate. We just ate. We could shit ourselves for sure. We are going into rapid fire, you guys. We didn't say that at the beginning of the episode that today's episode is a rapid fire. I feel like you guys already knew that, though. Y'all knew that. I feel like y'all know. If you guys know what the title is, y'all you know, know the know, tea. you know. It's kind of like turning into that on this know, podcast. You know. It really is. If you know, you if know. If you know, you know. Like, that's just what it is. That's the vibes. Well, our first topic is Haley Bieber and Selena Gomez broke the internet with po <laughs> posting pictures together and this is what I love to see they were at the Academy Museum Gala in LA and they posted the first official picture was posted by a photographer actually uh. that took it and he captioned it plot twist I wish I had a little lighter right now just go like this uh -huh. like I feel like peace has been restored I feel like they're like can everyone stop squawking about things yes. of the past that, and so they, we and can they move probably on literally are like yo like we're chilling like they're probably not in any way shape or form actually like it's really annoying. I'm feuding sure feuding in like, any way, shape, or form. Right, but the internet makes them feud. I feel like it's probably like really annoying for them when their fans do things like this because mm -hmm. it makes them seem like they're mad when they're not actually mad. Like yeah. they're like, please stop making it seem like Selena's probably like, please stop making it seem like I'm mad at Haley. Like I hate Haley when I she don't. She's like because like I don't care. Like I've moved right. on. It's been it's been also like so many years. Manny, like it's it's like she has so much for going sure. on for herself. Outside that of that, need, outside maybe? of that, that she doesn't need to like keep being reminded of like the Justin situation. Like, mm -hmm. girl, girl, it's time to move on. It is it's time to get move on on that. But I'm I honestly like seeing the photos. I was like thrilled seeing. I was like, it just I was, was happy so to nice. see that. I really it like, and They're I feel so like they had a kind of like not had the opportunity to necessarily do that yeah. per se. And then when, as soon as they had the opportunity, they they took it. You know, imagine if Cardi and Nikki did that. <gasps> 
don't. Now that's what we need to see. All now right. that would actually be a plot twist. Next up. If it was Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, plot twist. That. Hugging. You want to see the internet broken? And shattered and never repaired. And then they come out with an album together. Oh. <gasps> Did I go too far? You went too far. I went too far. You took it too far, and but what I'm if going we had to that? jump out of this window. But what if we had that? <laughs> I would literally, because I love Cardi songs, and yeah. I love Nicki songs. Me so too. Like, if them two together, I feel like it would actually be such a huge powerhouse, like iconicness, but I just don't think it would ever happen. I'm not but holding- listen, I'm a bar. I'm not holding my breath, you know? Oh, so you're team Nikki. I just know, I just love Nikki. So you're team Nikki. Okay, got it. But I'm also like, I don't know who's team me. I am. Oh, here it she comes. She knows me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I just like love her. Understandably. And when so, she complimented me that un one time. Under <laughs> Understandably. <so. laughs> I love them both. It would be hard for me to pick, right? but I would just love to They're see them great. in a pick together, honey. I, I always love to see a song. Like if you know that song would be so fucking sick. That's the thing. With Nikki and Cardi together in the one song, it would be like it would be like, what the fuck? Just them two, only them two. It would blow our minds. Blow our minds with the internet. Will it break the internet for break sure. It in half. In half. Who also who also like famous celebrity feuds? Feuds. Are like Ooh, iconic. Wait. Drake and somebody. Drake and I feel like he's had a few for sure, but wasn't Is it there Drake a and Jay Z? Nope, not Drake and Jay Z. It's, it's Drake and Kanye. It is. Isn't it Drake and Kanye? But like, I, like I don't care feud. about saying make up Me as neither. much. Drake is probably like, no thanks. I'm also like so over Kanye in general. Me too. So I'm like, I literally. I think everyone is kind of. I think we're all over Kanye. Moving. Did I step on the corn puffs? Yes, you did. How dare you? How dare I? Let me move those. You, the puff corns? <laughs> I hate corn. It's corn. corn. It's corn. <laughs> <laughs> They're too good. There. They are. They're divine. But no, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's kind of a good segue into the Kanye subject, even though it's not. Right there, but yeah. Kanye's in this. He's, you know, I think Kanye's tried done a ton of things and has said a ton of things, but I think this one is the one that, you know, brands are starting to make some pull decisions away. and pull away from him on. I saw that like Adidas was thinking about potentially cutting ties. Yeah. Um, I think Chase fully did. It seems like this situation isn't getting better. If anything, it's just getting worse with him. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, guys, you got to make a decision here. Um, it just gets worse. I feel like it just gets worse and worse, to be honest. I do too. Once you start going into also anti Semitism. Yes. It's His like tweets once you start, he posted. The tweets that he posted, he tweeted very anti Semitic things. And the thing um, is, he's tweeting this stuff like actively, like right now. I, it's wild. And it's hurting a lot of people. And Jamie Lee Curtis, actually, I think that she went on, it was Good Morning America, mm -hmm. I think it was. I think it was and yeah. like really spoke out on this. She was and like, I'm almost like, crying. She was pretty much crying on it, as mm -hmm. she should. And I'm really proud of her, you know, as a celebrity. I know a lot of celebrities have spoken out. It mm -hmm. definitely just wasn't her, but she was interviewing for her new movie coming out with yeah. Halloween. Mm -hmm. And she used part of her segment to discuss this. And I mean the fact that like she used it to like discuss how something how it's so important and like it's like she was saying on the lines of like who are we to like not say anything just to see it let it go by like I'll right. not stand up for like justice right and I was like part of me like even with the podcast sometimes I'm like I don't want to talk about Kanye so like it just makes me annoyed and frustrated with what's going on but it's like also in a way it's nice to be able to I use our like voices in, in a the capacity and that we can. It's a double edged sword, really, yeah. because he does this for us to talk about for him. Attention. He wants, he doesn't really care. I don't see, think he cares. I think he'll start to care when things start to fall apart for him. I though. think whenever his bank account starts to see the hit, maybe he'll he start care caring about what he's doing, you mm -hmm. know? But he doesn't really care. He wants the attention off of it. And I feel like when we talk about it, there is like, giving him attention to it but it's yeah. also like using our voices to speak out against what he's doing right it is like a double-edged sword so it's a double-edged sword but i'm really I'm, I'm proud of the celebrities that have come up forward and talked about it because it's like i'm sure it's like not an easy thing to do especially at a celebrity level like them like yeah getting into quote-unquote drama with uh -huh. potential with Kanye. like inserting like themselves no the drama. yeah a lot of people don't want to be involved i know jaden smith spoke out after mm -hmm. he walked out of, walked the, out of the show show Gigi hadid has spoken out mm -hmm. and there's definitely been others but those were two big ones that hit the internet when they spoke out yeah, I, so they I, I stick out them. to me mm -hmm. he was like after the after the white lives matter hoodie. and kendall jenner sure. liked all of jaden smith's yes. tweets against kanye so that i think was her way i know she doesn't want to like get into involved. the family drama yeah, get super totally. involved but it was her way of being like i don't support this guy and i'm siding with jaden totally so i thought that was cool it's insane it's, it's insane just like, it's, it's wild like i just feel like and also the thing is like i understand like that he has 
you know, mental disabilities and things going on in, in that capacity. And I totally get that. And I'm not taking that away from him. But at what point is it like, this is getting so out of hand. And I see people all the time be like, he's a musical genius. But I'm like, what does that have to do with like, what What are we supposed to be like? He's a musical genius. So he's so allowed he, to say so he's allowed he to do it. Yeah, like, that's no. what I'm like, why do people keep bringing that up whenever he does something outrageous? Like, cool. He's talented. Great. He a is. lot of people are. A lot of people a lot are. Of, there are a lot of really mus musical geniuses out there, actually. So how is it that he... Do you know, I also think, I think a lot of it plays into misogyny as well, though. Yeah, it does. I think a lot of it plays into misogyny. I think a lot of women get a lot harsher critiques, obviously, when it comes to things like this. Oh, my God. the fact that he has such a pro predominant, like, I'm sure a lot of male followers, they're so much less likely to be, like, get holding someone accountable. Get upset about this and hold them accountable. Yeah, exactly. I feel like a, a, lot, a big part of him not, you know, being held accountable for a lot of things is because of his predominant male audience mm -hmm. who doesn't really care. They don't care. And they care. see it like, oh, he's the king. He's a god. Mm, to you. To you. But baby, but to the, the rest the of us out here, of the he's not world. my god. No, he is not my god. No. Okay, babs, not happening. So I don't. I, I just feel like it's. I do think that, I'll, you know, seeing more celebrities talk about it and seeing big co corporations finally. like Ch like Chase and Adidas and like kind of having these conversations. I'm like, finally, it's getting to the point where it's actually making a difference. People talking about something is making a difference. I hate it for Kim. Me too. Because it's like kind of, it it's sucks. like, I know she used to love him for sure. And mm -hmm. it's like sitting back and watching someone used to love so much and the father of his children Implode. tear his own life apart. Mm -hmm. And I know that must be so painful to watch and Absolutely. like really frustrating because God only knows what's going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Right. I cannot even imagine. So, Truly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? Uh, Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller, baby, he's at it again. He Ezra, every every single time, every time. I feel like this is funny when we're doing when we're doing info. when we're doing peaks and pit. I feel like Ezra comes into the conversation many times, a little too often. A little so too does often. Kanye, and so does Kanye. And it's like so Ezra. I believe that they are what's it called getting. Ripped apart right now because of a potential. He's pleading not guilty because he's about to go to court for breaking into his neighbor's house and, and stealing. stealing liquor as well as causing a minor fire, like a small fire. Um, so he's going to court right now and he faces up to 26 years in prison. Alle this is all alleged, yeah. granted, because he is pleading guilty. So mm -hmm. we cannot. Not guilty. So not guilty. I'm sorry. Excuse mm. me. He's pleading <laughs> not guilty. So we cannot confirm, you know, what was done and what was wasn't done but something's i mean honestly like i feel like with that one too there's definitely definitely like a lot of issues going on up here he does his, his people made a statement mm -hmm. that there are mental health issues going on but that doesn't give anyone the right to break in someone's home Absolutely not. and steal their things mental health issues or not but the thing is at the end of the day we can understand why something's happening but it doesn't mean that it's okay that's happening mm -hmm. we can understand mm -hmm. like okay yeah we can understand that that's a big part of it but that doesn't mean that there's nothing to be done about it and there's this thing called consequences and when you do bad things consequences happen and i'm like well too <laughs> How are you going to get someone 26 years in prison for stealing liquor? I don't know. I know that that's like the max arsony sentence. Too, that's the arsony. max sentence. It's, is arson um, fire starting? It is. Arson, that yeah. is. Okay. I thought that was like stealing cars. Um, That seems that's a bit gift. a bit extreme. Uh -huh. Um, But that's like the worst thing that can happen to him. So there's no way he's going to get 26 years for this. I just like, I, I feel just like he's going to get on probation and like sure. a slap on the wrist for this. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. But this isn't his first run in. I mean, there have been other things with him. That going part, of me, on. So see, part of me feels like he's actually going to get more wrecked because of because his, of the amount of things that they have done before. Because don't they like if you go to court for something you've done and you have a clean record, they definitely like, take okay. that into account. Yes. Like this is your first offense. Mm -hmm. Like but, okay, you're not a bad citizen. Yeah. But he's had like so much public drama and right. stuff going on that like I think it's going to go against him. But I don't think he's going to get 26 years. I don't think so either. I think he can get wrecked for it. I definitely, definitely Even do, though but I it's think not going to be out years. causing a lot of issues. I don't think he should get 26 years in prison. I agree. For what for breaking in and stealing liquor. I do think he should be punished for it though because it does Absolutely. seem like he's constantly causing a ruckus. I feel like they genuinely need help too though. Like oh I my do. God, I really yeah. do feel like they personally like need actual help whether it's to be, you know, in a facility or it needs to be 
you know, a therapist, a psychologist, some kind of capacity, or like, you know, maybe kind of rewiring for, you know, a lot of times when people have to, when they struggle with mental illness, like they're, there's like uh, hormones that are missing and they're yeah. like off, off balance. And so it's like, when you start doing the balancing of these chemicals, like things start to kind of balance out mm -hmm. more. So maybe he just needs some balancing, all that kind of stuff. He need he needs, I feel like though Ezra, he's been acting for a minute now, huh? Absolutely. So I Long do time. feel like Ezra is one of the privileged people who has resources to get yes. help versus some people that they have none. to go by the system mm -hmm. and the system fails them a lot because they don't have any resources to get that mental help. Whereas I do feel like Ezra, he has to have some money if he's been acting and got these big Absolutely. roles. There has he to has be teams. some. It's a team. It's like there, he has a huge legal team. I'm like, so there has to be, it has to be him not proactively getting it. Absolutely. Versus not being able to like receive that. Well, you know what, what I mean? Is. I'm pretty sure it's And the that's where, really unfortunate. Yeah. Like he, like they truly have all the ability in the world to get help, but they choose not to. See, now that's. And it's giving Kanye. Oh my God, you're right. It's like, like that's what it feels like. I feel like Kanye has all the like money in the world to do anything he it's wants really to, and he just doesn't want when to. When the system fell, someone who didn't have the resources, yes. but when someone does have the resources and, they choose and choose against it, and then continues to choose to do things that are really not good, then like what the fuck? That's what I have to say. What the fuck? Come what on. What the now. fuck is going on? Like, what do you want everyone else to do for you? If you no, literally, if you can't help yourself. Get, yeah, exactly. So, because people, yeah. you can't force someone to get. I think help. it comes down to a point. Maybe you could in like a weird way. You like, can't because you get 51 50. Uh -huh. And there's definitely like, there's things that can happen. But it, for that's someone more to like really want to change their life and, you know, deal with the mental health thing, um, they have to make those decisions themselves. Uh, you can you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make can't them drink. Can't make them drink. And that's really unfortunate and for him. And that's the reality of the situation, which is very sad. It is sad. It's mm -hmm. just overall sad. Uh -oh. The thing is too, like, let's say like he did, like, let's say that the family was like, okay, we're gonna put you into this facility for now to get help. He gets help, gets out, doesn't do anything with it, goes right back. It's like, they can't force you to want to have, get help. Yeah. You have to want that for yourself. You have to be yeah. able to hit to like this, almost like this rock See, bottom. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, to be able to get back up yourself. You, at the end of the day, ultimately have to make that decision for yourself. You're responsible for your own decisions, dude. Like, you are. You're responsible for your life, your decisions. And, you know, especially as, at a certain age with the resources that you have. Like, come on. Come on. Um, with grace, of course, because I understand there's things going on, but. At some point, you got to get Other people are being affected now, so. Yes, like you can't affect other people when it comes to that stuff. Well, our next story. Ooh, this Olivia. One, this one's kind of a spicy one here. I feel like it is too, and I feel like it's definitely like something that's been kind of being talked about a lot recently. It actually is, this one. Olivia Wilde has been in the it's press wild. a lot. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. But I, you know, I'll re I read all the comments on the situation going on because the nanny has spoken out against or like what Jason, what had gone on behind closed doors with mm -hmm. Olivia and Jason's relationship. She did an article with Daily Mail and she spoke out and like even shared text messages, which I'm like, did is she, how is that even legal? Did she not I'm sign sure an NDA? NDA yeah. Like she's going to get herself sued, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But maybe they didn't have an NDA, but, but I feel like that would be kind of crazy because like if you read the text messages, they shared so much with her. Or it's expired. Like maybe the NDA had expired. Uh, or something like that. Maybe there's like a certain amount of days that they had it. Do you think that she got paid from Daily Mail? We're speculating. Because why could. else would she want to like be their nanny and expose them without like some type of reward Compensation. I feel yeah. like she could have been paid for them. Yeah, that, that Potentially. is maybe. Speculation. Speculation. Um... So the nanny of them, they have mm -hmm. two children together. They were engaged. They were not married. They're mm -hmm. broken up now. For seven years, engaged seven years. That's a long time. It is a long time to be engaged, I feel. So they were together. They had like, it seems like they had a marital relationship because they had two kids together and they lived yes. together. And yes. they had been together a long time. Like it was basically marriage. Yeah. Just without the legal court documents. So I understand the breakup being like such a big deal because they weren't mm -hmm. just like boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, it seemed really serious. And then there's a lot of speculating that Olivia was with Harry Styles before the relationship was over. Olivia right. claims our relationship had well ended before I, you know, had met Harry mm -hmm. and gotten into did things, with, did anything with Harry. And the nanny actually thinks different. 
The nanny thinks the fucking nanny dude is out here because the um, nanny would find Jason like crying his eyes out. And he even said to the nanny, according to the Daily Mail article that, you know, he was like, she left us. She left us and would be like devastated about bawling. it. Yeah. Bawling. Meaning she left us for like another person. Well, the thing is, what I think could have potentially happened as well. My speculation is that like they were on the rocks. Things are going poorly. They were going to get separated and Olivia potentially had found Harry in that time when they're like, okay, we're, we're done. They're just not like separated in more of like a public capacity, mm -hmm. but they're like, we're no longer together. I feel we're like, done. I feel like someone, oh, Addison Ray's parents, kind of a similar oh my situation. God, yes. Like with Monty, yes, yes, yes. Similar situation. Where it's like they had been over for over they a year. They were separated. So whenever like the girl came out that she'd been talking to Monty, where it's like, oh my God, he like, cheated on her. But then it kind of came out that they really were weren't like separated. Like they weren't, they hadn't been together for a while. So this behavior wasn't that crazy because the relationship was kind of already over. over. Even though they weren't like maybe legally separated. So me and Manny are like speculating that like, we they think done. they were done. And then, you know, she had kind of knew that that relationship was over. Granted, she hadn't moved out and that and completely ended it. But they had two kids in a custody battle to go through. So it wasn't like you could just break up and walk away. Yeah. I think, like, we think. It's a battle. It has to that be. Like, they were done. And then she met Harry. Totally. But even though they weren't technically separated, but like. They, they were, were They were still like separated. together, but ending it. We're wrapping it up. Yeah. Like, they're like, okay, we're not going to be together anymore. And, and I think like, obviously it hurt Jason when he found mm. out that she's like getting out of there, moving on. Faster. Faster than mm. what he had anticipated. Yeah. And with this hot pop star, hot young pop hot, star. The, one of the biggest in the world. Truly. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's shocking. That is shocking. That's jarring, really. Like, if I was Jason, I'd be like, in, yeah. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? 100%. Like, 100%. if my man ever left me for Harry, and the I'd thing be like, is, Olivia's gotten sense. a lot of bad press lately with the movie. Yes. What's it called? Love Me, Darling? Something, Darling? Don't uh, worry, darling. Don't worry, darling. Mm -hmm. She's because there was so much drama surrounding that, and yep. then there was drama surrounding the Jason breakup. It's, yep. it's being brought back up because the nanny and came out with nanny. more information. So she's been through like a lot. So I feel like people are automatically because when I read all the comments on the post about it, because all the entertainment they're sites like, are posting, so yeah, they're like, "Poor Jason deserved better." But I'm like, guys, we were not. They're, everyone's in there. so harsh on Olivia, though. They are so harsh on her. They're really and harsh I on her. low key feel like because Jason plays Ted Lasso, they envision. They because yeah. that show got so fucking mm -hmm. big, so many awards won for it, like yeah. so many Emmys. Yeah. So they love Jason because he plays his character, this sweet, well, sweet, sweet him. man. That's not him. It's not him. And and I could be wrong, but I really feel like the audience has fallen in love with him as Ted Lasso. Yes, thinking that he's Ted. And then you have Olivia over here who's already getting a ton of bad press mm -hmm. with Don't Worry Darling. Like pile on top of her. So it's a perfect storm for them to take is. Jason's side in this mm -hmm. one whenever we still really don't know we have no the idea whole truth. On. We have no idea what's going on, but I'm very intrigued. I mean, the fact that the nanny spoke about it and was like potentially essentially insinuating that Olivia was cheating mm -hmm, with Harry. I'm mm -hmm. like, who knows the real tea? Who knows the real not tea? Not us. You know, not us. But I would us. like to, I would like to At know, the though. end of the day, she wanted, to, it was clear she wanted to move on from Jason and he didn't, he didn't want to move on. And one red flag I noticed he did to her is when he served her, Oof, I, I don't know right. if it, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was custody legal papers. Okay. Um, While she was like presenting. Cause it was, and, yeah, because it wasn't like a divorce because they weren't married. Uh, they weren't married. So, so I like believe what? it was like custody papers. A serving and of some I type. thought that that was extremely tacky and uncalled for. I it was agree. just him being nasty. So then that goes to show you he's not Mr. Perfect he's either. He's not Ted Lasso. It sound, he's not Ted Lasso. It seems like they didn't have a perfect relationship on mm -hmm. either end. Yep. Um, kind of like not that to compare at all, but like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, I feel like neither of them were good in the relationship. 100%. Um, and then this situation, I feel like same thing. I feel like it's the same. I feel like they both were stinkers. A hundred. I mean, I never take just one side of things. Like, there's so many things that go down between. And two things can couple. be true as well. Like two, two things, things can, can be, be true. true. Two things can be bad. Two things can be, be good. Bad. Like he could have been a messy partner. And she she could have been, been a messy, messy yeah, partner. Exactly. Like two things can be true. It's not just like, oh, well, because he's Ted Lasso, he's like the sweet, innocent one. It's like, no, like that's not how relationships work either. Yeah. There's a lot of times there's things that happen on between both sides. We never get the full story. There's three sides to every story. And people really connect with actors in a way because I remember when, um, what's the TV show 13 Reasons? On Netflix, mm -hmm. is that what it was called? Thirteen Reasons Why. That Thirteen Reasons Why. Mm -hmm. Who was the kid that played the bad guy? 
I don't want to use the word. Oh, um, but you know who, I know exactly who you're talking, talking about. about. Yeah, so the he, blonde boy. Yes. Yep. So he on the red carpet would not get any love on Instagram, got no love because of his character. Right. But I remember his co-stars kind of making a light post about it with him saying like he deserves just as much support, guys. This is his character. He's a great human being. Yeah, it's what he's doing. But people perceive like what Joffrey they see. like Joffrey from fucking. Yes. From Game of Game Thrones. Of Thrones. Like, like Joffrey. Like bitch. And like, and like when you see him on the red carpet, they may not get as much love because the character they played, but they should get just as much love because again, they played that character so well. They made you really feel it. Meaning- they're great and talented. Exactly. But people, what they see is perception is reality for Absolutely. them. So I feel like that could be happening in this situation with like Jason. Like some people probably the sweetest angel on a show and a demon behind the scenes. Ooh, I bet that's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. That's literally what like, Hollywood's known is. for. I yes. like, They play this character that's so sweet and, and like just like the best ever. And then in reality, there's like a fucking demon. A, a lot of people had said that about in Glee, Leah Michelle. <gasps> The amount of people that have spoke up against Leah Michelle. Multiple people came out. From the cast being like, she's the worst. Well, all, she seems really sweet she, right? on camera. Exactly. Um, but they had bad experiences with her. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, see, so you just never really know. You shouldn't the, ever. You should, never you should always like make sure you're not trying to play that character. You know, it's like exactly. people are different. But um, so interesting. Gosh, I bet Olivia Wilde is like, can we Can play? I get a fucking break? Like, can you imagine her getting a phone she call? Just, I think she just t- said something she today did. on entertainment about being like, dude, like I want to like be in a coma or something. Yeah, something actually, like that. I don't blame her. I would too. Can you imagine being like, phone call? Like, oh, your nanny just released all the texts between you and your husband and her. And like, I would be like. I would faint. Oh. I'd be like, again, again more of this PR more. nightmare. Nightmare. I did like her going and doing an interview about Don't Worry Darling and kind of hitting it head on rather yeah. than just hiding away. I, I enjoyed that. that so did she, I. She totally hit it head on. But anyways, there's the tea there's on that. that. There's that. I mean, we're just speculating here because who knows how the relationship is. But, yeah. you know, we're not putting our eggs all No, we're that, not. So. We are very like, we need to see the whole picture. We, we like did. to... We like to play devil's advocate. We want to see what's going on with the we full do. story. We do. We need all the tea, not just a little bit of the tea. Okay, Manny, you want to spill some tea on Amorath? And yes, yes, happens? it's Amaranth. I believe it's Amaranth. 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 Like Amaranth. Yeah. Amaranth. Um, so she's actually a streamer. And I don't know a ton, ton about this story, but I just saw it recently like on Twitter. And I was like, hey, what the fuck's going on? So apparently she's on a, she's on a stream, right? Amaranth's on a stream. Live. Huge streamer on a live stream. And she's on the phone with her husband. And a lot of people think that she's single because she said like her whole career. She's like, oh yeah, I'm single. I'm not with anyone, whatever, whatever. Is she beautiful and like hot? Stunning, hot, gorgeous, beautiful. So I'm gonna look her up. Look her up, look her up. So she's doing this live and she's on the phone and the husband is like going the fuck off on she her. She has on the speaker? Phone, has him on speaker. I believe he's on speaker, yeah. Um, Is going off on her. And basically she shows like this clips of like what's going on. And basically she says like, you just threatened to kill our dogs. <gasps> You are forcing me to do these streams. Like, I don't want to stream. Apparently, this is obviously alleged. She has said that, like, a ton. He has made her kind of go on with this persona of being like, I don't have a husband. I'm single. Because it's so uh, lucrative for them because of the money. So he's like, <gasps> I'm going. To, so he told you, he's like, if you don't call me back right now, I'm going to drain all the accounts. You're not going to have any money left. I'm going to delete their, your accounts. Because he has, like, I guess, access to all this stuff because they're uh, their Married. husband. And, yeah, their husband and wife. So he has access to all this stuff. And so he's like, I'm going to, you know, kill the dogs, all this crazy stuff. And so basically the whole situation is like, you know, people feeling so horribly for, for Amaranth, who's literally crying on the stream being like, you, I have, I'm in an abusive relationship, you know? And a lot of people have like, st- like a lot of men, of course, like fucking the worst, have been like, oh, well, it doesn't, like, it seems like she's a liar because she said that she was single. So they turn it into like her being her a liar. Her husband wanted her to do that. He said it like on the call. Yeah. And so, but people are like, oh, well, she's a liar. Those, how can you believe like, anything she's saying? And I'm like, oh, you'll do anything that you can to not believe this woman. Yeah. You will do, people it, will do anything they can to not believe a woman. Jump through any hoop Literally. to not believe a woman. And to, to believe the man instead. Well, we have it's an sick. actual update on the situation. Kate, uh, her name's Caitlin, by the way. Caitlin, got it. And I think that's her username, maybe? It's Amaranth, uh-huh. got her, her username. She revealed that she and her pets are safe. She is in control of her finances. And now her spouse is no longer living with her. And he's currently seeking help. Okay, well, uh-huh. that's like a, that's, that's a great good. update to be honest. She is one of Twitch's most popular and high highest paid um, people. I feel like she makes like a million a month. Oh my god! I think it's like something like that. Holy! Like where guacamole. she's like a humongous, humongous stringer. I could also be completely wrong, but I remember I feel like I'd seen um, her do something with with 
Anthony Padilla. Wow. And they talked about it. It says on October 16th, which, by the way, was super recent, she revealed she was married. See, everybody thought she was single mm -hmm. and forced by her husband to keep it a secret in order not to ruin their business model. See, so I, I mean, from, from what I gathered from the story, I did get a, a good of it, right? A bunch of it, right? Oh, my God. It was just sad, like, seeing a lot of people. No, like, you got it. You got it great. She it was said horrible. She was also afraid to leave her home. This is The Verge, by the way, is the article mm. I'm reading. But it says she was afraid to leave her home as he threatened to harm her pets um, and all her financial accounts were controlled by him. She also shared text messages between her and her husband where he threatened to destroy her property and drain her bank account. Yep. Wow. It's like just crazy. So like it's wild to see like the the gag of it all really is like you can see someone's life and think that they have it all together and everything's perfect and everything is good and wonderful and you know they don't share every part of their lives but like mm -hmm. they could be going through this horrible horrible storm mm -hmm. in their real life and they could be using social media or their job as a way to like escape wow and no one use that and so it's like you never really know what people are actually going through and it doesn't make them liars it means that they have there's things that they want to keep to themselves yeah that is so wild um she said she's seeking legal and emotional counsel which is great thank god i know well Gosh. we wish her the fucking best honestly it's insane. that is so crazy literally crazy good for her for being brave enough to like end this and like put him not only just end it but like put him on blast for all that's been going on and not like just keep it a secret trying to end it you know like 100%. she really like stooped and gooped his ass yeah and he deserved it i would like to see him publicly you know like see what he looks like publicly what would he do? yeah since he forced his wife into all this yeah you know and threatened her it's insane it kind of is insane. Very kind of insane. Well, our next story is also a little crazy. Yes. Ulta Beauty. Ulta, Ulta honestly, Ulta, Ulta, Ulta. we love you. We love you, Ulta. We stand with you and we're obsessed with you. I've always had a great relationship with Ulta mm -hmm. and they've always been the kindest people anytime I've worked with them at any capacity. Yep. Um, they've been really professional. They've been really great. And I love Ulta. I love Ulta and I love their stores and I love their setup. And I love what they're about. I love that they have mass brands. They have prestige brands. Like they're very much like a, we have something for everyone kind of store. They're and also I love that. like always willing to grow and innovate instead yep. of keeping like, this is our business model. Like they're always like taking new brands and mm -hmm. trying new ideas. Cause like Max in there now and stuff, you Absolutely. know what I mean? Like they've yeah. kind of expanded so much. You know, they have like Kim's brand and Kylie's yeah. brand. And I think that's so cool. Well, they like, I feel like they change with the times. They do. Like they're they not do. like, they're not stagnant in their ways. They're not a lot looking of at stores things, are. Especially like the older stores. Oh yeah. Like you know the older brands, like yeah. the older beauty brands that are very just like, they, they're about they're their so ways stuck and in they're their stuck. ways that they're um, fizzling out mm -hmm. because of their unwillingness for change. Yep, exactly. So and Ulta's not that girl. No, they're not. And they even have a podcast, mm -hmm. which, which I, I had no idea, idea about. Well, which now, I'm like, what the fuck? Well, honey, now we know. I'm like, get <laughs> hey, the fools on hey, there. Ulta, do you want to have on our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one yellow block. <laughs> We're like an orange block. An orange block, and it just comes. It <laughs> just says speaker. Ulta. It's a <laughs> from the and we CEO, just talk to it. I'm like, how are you? It's just one Ulta block. Oh my, oh my God. God. But basically, guys, so Dylan is a famous TikToker. Yep. She's a famous trans TikToker she who talks nine about. Million followers. Yeah, no, she's like extremely popular. She does these videos where it's like day 33 of being a girl, and she's like basically showing her transition. I think it's Dylan Mullany, I believe is her last name. Showing her transition throughout, just like from when it started to where it is now, we're more like 200 plus days Day by it. day. Day by day of just like, these are things that kind of I'm dealing with as a trans woman, right? So Dylan um, actually did a pot, was on Ulta's podcast and it was kind of talking about, um, and with David Lopez as well, by the way, who I love, I love you, David. Um, they were talking about, you know, just like, womanhood and just you know things going on like things that dylan faces as a trans woman and you know just there's this, it's a safe space for trans people ulta is basically being like yo we believe in trans women and you know women are women regardless so basically ulta has been trending on twitter boycott ulta from like anti-trans people and people <laughs> like that are verified i've seen so many verified tweets that are like just saying the worst against. against be like, I can't believe Ulta would let quote unquote, these two men talk about things going on about women. Like this yeah. is disgusting. And like, you should never, like that should never be allowed. And it's like the way that they just completely 
miss the point of what was actually going down of and course. for them to even say like how that's just so rude like to be like oh this man and i'm like you clearly see they're transitioning they're a woman like it's so it's just sad like to me like I, when i was saying it i was seeing the comments i really didn't think anything i'm like oh that's awesome that ulta like included dylan like i didn't think anything of it mm -hmm. and then i saw the boycott ulta and it was like on a podcast it's like so odd how people can get so up and bothered by something like this in 2022 but that's I what mean, i was talking about that's what you I'm know saying. it's like i mean come like i don't know i guess because i believe in people being themselves authentically same through and through and like what other persons also what other people do like in a way like that doesn't affect me or other people right so, so what's like, the point of that? what's the point in that why, why say I, anything why say anything even if you don't agree with allowing people to be authentically themselves mm -hmm. i don't understand why trying to tear someone down for doing it even if like you don't believe it i do i think everyone should 100 percent be authentically who they are you know for me what really pisses me off is for people to go out of their way to comment under ulta stuff and being like i'm gonna boycott your brand yeah. because you support trans women see that's that's what, that's pisses what me off. i'm like this is crazy to me i just don't understand that you that's know? why i don't get it either. i'm like if you don't if you don't respect that if you're not about that life like if you're not about you don't believe that that's even real then okay like you know what that's are you supposed to do that's your thoughts that's your choice and thoughts and choice right. right but you don't need to project negativity and hate into the world and being that like and undermining point. other like, people's why undermine life? other people and businesses supporting other people like i don't get that people want to be offended by so bad though yeah people want to be offended by other people so badly because of the fact that what uh dylan is trans and talking about the female experience as they have perceived it mm -hmm. and being like oh well I'm a real woman, quote unquote, the, the comments. I'm a real woman. This is what it's really like. Okay, girl. Well, then go be a real then woman. Go be, go, go be like, a real woman then. Whatever you interpret. Yes. Then go do that and like leave Dylan B and leave Ulta B. Exactly. Listen, right? when I saw that Ulta was getting this kind of hate, I said, I can't wait to spend my next check at Ulta. Literally. The way I'm going to like ride for Ulta even more now, just for them to want to create a space for trans people, a safe, a safe space, open space. The fact for that the world people. is so disgusting towards trans people in the general, and Ulta is just trying to create a sliver of light, uh -huh. and people still want to shit on that and snuff out that light is disgusting. It's such a shame. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. And I almost sometimes forget because I live in Los Angeles that a lot of people are so close minded. Yeah. In the United States, though. Yeah. And I forget because I live in a bubble and I live in this, you know, this liberal bubble that I'm in, and just I believe that everyone should be themselves and. X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So when I see things like this, I'm like, wait, why is this happening? I, it confused me. Yeah. And I didn't understand why Boycott Ulta was trending. And I didn't get why, I just didn't understand it. So. I know, even when you were explaining it to me, I was like, like huh? wait, wait, tell like, me. It was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like what? I, and I almost like was telling, I was telling Laura, I'm like, am I crazy? Or is this what I'm actually perceiving? Yeah. That they're getting hate for supporting For trans supporting, women. yes. It just- It blew my fucking mind. It just mind. blows my mind. It blows my mind. Blew my fucking mind. But here we are. But here we are. This is the world we live in, apparently. So we wanted to, you know. Send love to Ulta. Send, yeah. Send our good vibes and uh, love to Ulta. We'll be supporting Ulta. Absolutely. Through and through. I think they're a great company. Mm. I don't think any company is perfect. I don't think they did anything wrong here. I think, think they did a great thing here. Totally. But um, overall, I love Ulta and I'll I do too. continue to support. And I'm a stand beside him. And I'm a stand beside him. And I'm a stand beside him. That's my man. And I'm a stand beside him. in Ulta shopping <laughs> yes, and waiting are. for sephora's podcast <laughs> yeah 100 percent. oh it's like this at sephora <clears throat> what did you what'd you say <laughs> oh do you feel like the rivals behind the scenes 100 percent. i do too I, I, I feel like ulta and sephora are like the ultimate rivals i do too like i, I really like do bat, like they battle i i literally do like too. frenemies almost like where it's like professional but they're like they're, enemies i've never heard any tea or drama between the two but i just have to you know you just know. you know like things that go down are like oh well you can't have competing things from ulta or sephora all well, that's that stuff. the big thing with their stores it's yeah. like you're either exclusive with ulta exclusive or exclusive with, with sephora. sephora and those are the rules now if you're mm -hmm. in both they like both are like fussy about that you know like they don't love that yeah they want to be the they want to be the only one and they even take it as far as like for instance when tart did the famous shape tape concealer yes. that was exclusive to ulta so sephora couldn't carry that product mm -hmm. so if, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of brands have 
if they're in both stores, like Tur, Urban Decay, a lot uh -huh. of big prestige brands are in both stores. They have exclusive products per store, so mm -hmm. you're still creating a division there. So you know there's some major competition. You know, Sephora was shook when how big Ulta, how a big oh, shape tape got. Honey, I know Sephora when the shape tape came out, mean. Sephora was beating their head against the wall. They were. I know it. How, like that. Sh I know shape tape has made millions of dollars. Oh, and shape tape alone has made millions, millions and that was an dollars. Ulta exclusive. Uh -huh. So Ulta was like, <laughs> and then you still can't buy it at Sephora. <laughs> yep. So that con they must have done a good deal. They did a fucking, fucking I'm sure good, they had a great they deal. They did a good split on that. Yes, they did. And so it kept the product in. Uh, go Tart, honestly, on that one. Yeah, go Tart. Because they're, really, the, they're the winners. Tart, Tart's the real Tart's winner. Because Tart's the real winner at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, it was a good deal. Wow. But the thing is, it's tricky with makeup because um, if you notice, Ulta, I mean, Sephora likes to take on um, brands behind celebs or influencers. Mm -hmm. And Ulta, while they've done that with Kim and Kylie's brand, mm -hmm. not much else. Ari Ariana. Oh, Ulta is Ariana. Ulta has Rem. Ulta has Jacqueline. Well, they're taking all the Forma brands. They're taking all the Forma ones. Speaking uh, of, speak well, <laughs> I forgot about that one. Don't do that. We're gonna take a little break and we'll be right back to talk we'll on this talk last about one. Cause we need to Google it. Yeah. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. You guys, ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. Literally, me and Laura were just talking about this. This is so freaking crazy. Yes. We were just talking to a friend about this, about ZocDoc and how cool it is that you can actually find a doctor that is reviewed by people. You know what I mean? It yes. makes it like so much more personal and like you can actually see, it's almost like you're like rating your your like doctor. A professor, but yeah. Doctor, and you know? I feel like it's so important. Like we look up reviews mm -hmm. on restaurants. Mm -hmm. We look up reviews on college courses products. and products on Sephora and whatnot. And you know what's so crazy? We don't look up reviews on our actual doctor, which I, is like the most important place to look up a review. Literally. So on ZocDoc, they'll like help you find what doctors write for you with your insurance. But you also get reviews on that doctor and other people's experience. What I love about it too is that the fact that they can actually – have so many specialists on ZocDoc. They can, like, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get a mole checked, anything ZocDoc has doctors for everything with every specialty, which I think That's is just right. so genius. Isn't that cool? And mm -hmm. guess what? Every single month, they have millions of people using ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash full and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for your top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash full. Zocdoc dot com slash full. Okay, so we're back. We're we'll back, our little baby. deep dive. We wanted to jump in just a little bit before we close this podcast. So Forma is considering, considering. filing for bankruptcy as an mm -hmm. option to loosen up some of their debt because they are between six. Kirby, shout out to you, by the way. We love you, Kirby. We love you, Kirby. She's a great reporter on this. Because she's just also a great human. She's a great human, but she also is like one of the best people because she's been doing in this industry for years. And so Whatever. she's really good at breaking down what's actually factually happening. In an easy way to absorb. In a, in a really great way. Mm -hmm. So um, basically there are between 600 and between 600 and 700 million dollars in, in debt. debt. How? I honestly like, so Forma does, so they're an incubator, but they also have like their own brands. Incubator is basically like kind of helping a brand create a brand. Source. Sourcing, all that kind of stuff, I'm sure. But like, for example, like REM, even though Forma helped incubate it, they don't own it. So they don't, mm -hmm. like they're not the owners of it. I literally looked at the Forma site and it's not considered a form of brand REM. Oh, that's so strange. Which I, I've never actually really heard of. I thought that they were big time like owners and investors of Ariana Grande's brands. Brand. I thought they were like, that was- But the, how the, the heck are they like seven, almost 700 million in debt? Like that's that, where I have that questions. That blows my mind. So obviously when you guys file, so when you file for bankruptcy, a lot of the times it's to, it's like almost like a money forgiveness, credit forgiveness, mm -hmm. but it fucks up your credit for like years and years and years. 10 years is it? I think, well, that's like for like an individual. individual. I don't know I'm about sure a it's for a business. I have no idea how that mm -hmm. actually works. I don't know the legal behind that, but they're considering it because they have like, they're just like considering their options to free up some of their, the, the money. It's interesting how this is public knowledge. I know. That they're just considering it. Well, I'm sure there was like an interview so that happened they and then they that? ran with it. They were like, oh, because they, they, they might have said like, oh, is anything off the table for like 
And they're probably like, no, like everything's on the table. Interesting. You know what I mean? So I think that that has a big part of it. Mm. Um, but I do find it very fascinating that they're considering, because Morphe was like one of the biggest brands at, at one point. Morphe was one of the biggest brands ever for them. And that's kind of like where they started, I feel like, mm -hmm. with their investments in the makeup company. Yes, and yes. then they created Morphe 2, uh -huh. which was known for Gen Z to stay yep. in the loop there. And they end up collabing with a bunch of TikTokers. And yep. then you just see Morphe out of nowhere. And the bad habit. A little bit. I mean, like, they yeah. they definitely aren't. It's what they the same. It's not the same as what it used to be, mm -hmm. but the support for them is not the same as what it used to Absolutely be. Absolutely not. They're not really talked about mm -hmm. a lot of, at all. Things, so I think what made it hard, too, is, like, for example, like, when I was in the Morphe bubble, it was when I was really close to the founders. Me, too. And it was, and you, too. Like, we were close to the founders. There was a family story behind the brand. There was so much that was going on with that. That for us, like they were our friends, like our real Linda friends. Linda and Chris. Linda and Chris. We would go to dinner with them, and like we would do so much with them specifically. Like we were like family. It was in a like way. supporting a good friend's business. Exactly is what it felt That's like. That's what it felt like. And then, but then it they got just acquired. when they got acquired. It's not that I had a bad relationship with the acquirers at all. It's mm -hmm. just like I didn't know Morphe anymore. Same. And they, they, things just changed. all the rules change. Everything was like Everything different. Changed. And it's like you know what. We, like we've been pushing this brand for so long years and years and years years and years so i think that also like when you feel kind of like jaded by that like in a way where things change up so much that you're like why am i even doing this yeah like, you, it's like you don't feel like that attachment like you have like your friend mm -hmm. that you were there for like that you're riding for them hard as fuck because you're like that's my friend's business i'm going to help them too you're also earning money from it too it's not like we're like not doing it like we not were getting definitely money. We're getting money. compensated we're as getting well compensated when it comes to being an affiliate but I think, again, like when things change and you don't have that kind of connection mm -hmm. like you did, that you're kind of like, you feel kind of like, well, okay, well, it was fun when it lasted. And because like Forma owns such a big hunk of Morphe, Linda and Chris didn't get to make decisions no. that Forma or their investors were making. Yeah. Like they were no longer, were like their voting. hands were tied. Yeah, they like, you know like, they can I mean? vote into things, but they can't They make can't make the ultimate decision. And so that's when things, I think, really changed for them as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know? that, I mean, that's, I feel like when it changed for us with Do you a lot think of that Morphe would still be where it's at, where it was today if Linda and Chris stayed on, stayed on and were never, never took on them? I don't. I don't know either. I really, because like the landscape is so different when it comes to beauty. That that too, because not only know. did like all that change. I mean, the ultimate goal of a business is to have an investor come right. in and help you. And, and that'd be mm -hmm. a great experience in growing a brand. Like that's the ultimate goal. Right. So I agree with what Chris and Linda did totally. Like, 100%. hello, they can't, the company got way too big for them too anyways. I think absolutely, it became huge. It was just so big overnight for mm -hmm. them. Um, and that's just too much for them to take on as two individuals. Their brother and sister, by the way, which I think is so sweet. So it's so sweet. Um, and they like live right I, next I don't to think each that, other. I don't think it would still be the same. I don't think it would be either way. what it was. Either, either way. way. I think um, you're right. I think that, you know, Morphe was fucking, it hit the makeup bubble like right when it was inflating. It, yeah. And it truly was like the perfect storm, the perfect timing. Like literally, I feel like at the time they had every big influencer talking about them, like in the beauty space, um, because we appreciated them. Like they were actually cool people. We were getting compensated for it too as an affiliate. We genuinely loved the brushes. Like there was so many good things. It was mm -hmm. like a, the perfect, like happy storm. And it can't last forever. And it can't last forever. And that's so. kind of what it was. But yeah, they're considering Filing for bankruptcy, which I feel like I can understand if you're, I didn't realize that there were 600 to 700 million dollars in debt. That's shocking. Had no fucking idea. I don't know how all that works though. Me neither. Because like, and like, never what, like do, other, do other brands have more debt? Is that like it, normal? Their... Is that a normal amount of debt? Maybe. If you own that I've, many companies. I'm or like not invested. in debt with my brand. Oh no, not at all. No, and neither are you. No. I'm like I don't. So I don't know like but what. But see, we don't own like a different companies. We're not right, like an right. investor because Forma is like a big brand. investor. Yeah, yeah, we just have, we have our, our own brand. brand. So like for huge conglomerate investors, is, is that, that normal? normal? We don't know. I would never think that. I would never think that that would be because it's like our investors like wanting to make money. Is that the whole fucking point? I think so. So I really am like confused to be honest me too so i guess honestly all we can do now is, is wait, and, wait see. and see what like plays out with them but just interesting information going around in the space I, I was like whoa mm -hmm. okay didn't expect this but here we are right
So, and that's it for our rapid fire, guys. That's it for today's episode. Thank you. We had a lot of like diverse topics, like we a did. lot of different. Even a beauty one. Yeah. We never get a beauty in we rapid fire. We never get a beauty rapid fire, honey. Never. never. So, wow. I'm actually kind of shocked that we even got one of those in things there. Things are happening. Things are moving. This mm-hmm. is going to be like a long ass episode. I can feel it in my bones. Woo. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed and we will catch you in our next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like, and leave us a comment down below. We love you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, you guys. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah.